Well, good morning guys. Welcome back to uh, Gaza's Great Pond. God damn. Are you staying in, Doug, or are you coming out? Coming in. Sorry. Have I got, or am I having, some problems with parasites? This is starting to get goddamn frustrating. We've had flukes which we treated and we scraped two weeks after all clear no flukes nothing we're taking some fish over for mr tropical koi mike so i wanted to check and make sure that the fish that i was moving over for which was is case i case i case i well it was pronounced you know what i mean um shower from my growing show for him and his dining each penny guy so we did a couple of scrapes. Most of the fish that I scraped at first all clean. My Yamabuke acting a bit weird. Odd occasional flash every now and again, a couple of them flashing, so I thought well we'll give them a scrape. And I found white spot. So we treated for white spot. We got the got rid of the white spot. Prior to taking the fish over the day before, I did a scrape. Again, the following week after I treated for the white spot, fluke again. So we underwent and started the treatment. This is day three of treating for the fluke again. Uh, yeah, the joys. So we're in the process right now of day three of treating for fluke. Come out this morning. Yamabuki is not happy at all. After talking about him last night, saying he was fine yesterday, all the others were flashing a bit with the treatments for fluke. We thought we'll uh, we'll come out have a look first thing in the morning. It's the first coffee. It's still warm. I've just had a conversation in uh, Vince's Yamatonoski growing show. With Skege, and he's giving me a bit of advice because I was wondering whether or not I should just give him a PP bath because he's he look, he's clamped up, he's down on the bottom. I come out to the pond, I thought, oh, what's going on with him? As soon as I come down, whew, flashing around, skimming off of stuff, coming up to the surface, breaching the water. Skege thinks I may have uh, gill flux. So, we're going to go through the process of taking some scrapes and having a check again. But he's not happy. Everybody else seems pretty, pretty well relaxed, but they were all flashing quite a lot on day one and on day two, at day three. Now this guy is going around like a nutcase, flashing off of everything, then he's settling to the bottom, clamped up. So we're going to do some scrapes, we're going to find out what's going on. Let's see. There you go. My little sunny down there. Probably about to start doing the zoom is. That's his uh, normal starting position. He comes flying up here, as most of you might have seen the other week. But at present, he's been good. So he's out here chilling with me. But the pain in the ass of having a net on your pond. That when you want to do this, you've got to get that net off. But there's the yummy. Well, he's going to get to see what he's doing a little bit. There we go. See, rising and topping like that, not good. And then his pecs are flicking, so he's not happy. There's something in there that's irritating him. Now I was wondering whether or not I should give him a pee pee bath. Maybe that might ease it a little bit for him if he's still got something on him. 
Muskegee advised if I were going to do anything, something a little bit less harsh would be a salt bath. But then explaining after I've said what's what, he thinks it could also be costier or something else. So we need to find out which one it is, give him a scrape and let's see if we can get this Yamabuki back to his normal self before his pecs get any more damage to him from all the flashing and you know scraping and jumping that he's been doing but other than that everybody else seems fine nobody else is flashing no more like there was but this fella's not happy and his stomach going on so we need to find out what so I'm gonna get the net off get a bit of water in a bowl get the microscope set up and I'll get back to you in a tick all right you were lucky enough just to miss the zoomies um, these proper spooked cockapoos they seem to be real timid dogs really easily spooked by stuff so he's getting to have a good sniff around now see there you go just shit himself because he's seen a landing net <laughs> It was scared stupid because I got the uh, well, koi sock out. But now he's let my run nosy around because he needs to get used to all this. Last time I did it, he weren't out here with me. So let him get used to seeing it. I've got the netting ready, some water in the bowl. We have, oh no, mind out. We've got the microscope set up with the adapter for the mobile phone which I will put over the top and hopefully we can get that recorded as well. I've got three slides. There we go. Three slides, one from the underside and then yeah, you can use anything guys but at the end of the day I just use this because it's a soft pliable flexible card and it just so happens to be you know a sim card holder because it's it's quite soft not got no sharp edges, bit flexy, bit bendy, and it's you know, really quite flexible. And it doesn't do any damage, so we can see if we can get a scrape off and see if we can get to the bottom of what's going on in here. So, next thing is get the Yamabuki netted up and into the bowl, <clears throat> and we'll see what we can find. And then we're going to do a couple of scrapes and some others, and then I will be putting said mobile phone in the cradle and showing you what we find. Hopefully guys, Sonny, stop eating grass. Hopefully, you can see this. Fingers crossed, this is gonna work out so that you can. Come on, wait.
And hopefully, guys, you can see that. Drop of water. I'll take that one over and we'll put that under the microscope and then we'll do the other side. Steady boy, okay. Again, there we go. A drop of water, and then we're going to get one off of his underside. But he's absolutely smashed his fins to pieces. Getting a bit wet. Come on. There we go. A little bit on the difficult side to do. Plenty of mucus on there. So there's just three, three scrapes of the yammer. That's him back in. Let's see what we can find. Right guys, hopefully. to see this and see what we can find.
if we find anything at all. So that's slide number one. Nothing. Slide number two, the opposite side of the body. Let's see if we can find anything on this one. So there you go guys, that's slide number two. Absolutely nothing again. There's the slide. magnification again Slide number two, nothing. Slide number three.
<laughs> Sorry, just laughing. Um, since I put the bird feeders out, and wherever I'm in here now, I have a little resident robin that keeps coming into the right in the doorway of the shed, literally looking straight at me. And every now and again, I just chuck it a couple of little mealworms, but can't give him any right now. He's just flown off as if, as if to say, Come on, where's my mealworms? And I only get a couple of mealworms from this. Again, guys, look, slide number three. Nothing. The fish is clean. Yeah, the little robin. He just comes in right to the doorstep here. He actually came in the shed the other day for his couple of mealworms. But this is a bit I don't get. Fish is scraping clean, yet he's clamped up, but his fins are smashed to bits. He's been bashing off of everything. Tail fins got splits in it, his anal fins have got damage to him. His, uh, well, whatever they call the rear set of the two uh, fins either side of the anal fin, they're split and torn. He's given himself a fair bit of damage, but yet there's nothing wrong. And scraping clean, but yet look at him, fully clamped up. So I think I'm going to go give him a salt bath, let him have a salt bath, and I'll scrape a couple of the others. Just double check, make sure there's nothing on. But there's no flukes on him. I want to see if we can get any flukes off anything else and see what happens then. So I'll get back to you in a bit when I've done a couple more scrapes. Right guys, so this is a scrape of my chunk. go so we're undergoing treatments for fluke at present and there we have a tiny little baby fluke so we've got fluke treatments in yet we've still got fluke present on the chag nothing on the yamabuka as you can see, that's quite a small fluke. They do tend to look a lot bigger than that. So we know we've got fluke, and we're in day three of treating for fluke. This is the third morning. again another one there Let's see if we can get that a little more
make sure that, that wasn't why it's got me, is it? Right, so we know we've got fork on that side. Let's check the other one. Now with Costia and Trick, they tend to dance around more in the water outside the side of the slime coat than what they would do on the slime coat. You tend to see them in the more outer edges, which is the present. There we go. One little shitty fluke again. See that's tiny. Normally they're a lot bigger than that. Well, when I've seen them, they're a lot bigger, so it would indicate. There we go. One little fluke. So again, one little fluke on slide number two. Two flukes on slide number one. Which I already knew I had fluke. But I can't understand when I'm scraping the Yamabuka why he clean comes on with nothing on him. Yeah, he's acting like he's snided up in all sorts of parasites. Two floats on slide number two. Slide number three from the underside of the jug. That was the left hand side, the right hand side and the underside is this one. Costia, no trick, no white spot. Folks. 
Which is strange. I don't understand why the Yamabuki, excuse me, I don't understand why the Yamabuki is acting the way he is. We know we've got flukes. Yet that crazy lunatic, because he is crazy, I'm sure the fish is it's not full, it's not a full shilling. Everybody else acts completely normal, cruising around. We know we've got flukes. Yes, we're under treatment for flukes. We're on day three. And then another advice from Skid, yeah, and as I've heard people, other people saying it, one full treatment day one, um, one part treatment day two, something like that. And, and there's a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a, listen to the message that I got again. But you missed day two, partial treatment day three, full treatment, something along those lines, because apparently they're getting a little bit more difficult to get rid of. But I mean, that's day, this is day three. This is morning number three. Flukes all pro, uh, sorry, Lernex Pro. Oh, so you can see, guys. Lernex Pro is in. I'm thinking I'm going to give him a salt bath and let him just bang an air stone in, put him a bit of water in, give him a good salt bath, and see if that chills him out a little bit, settles him down. But. You're getting a lot of damage on him from flashing around and constantly whacking himself off of everything. Try, might try to see if I can get a scrape from inside the gill, but I don't like doing that kind of thing, especially I'd rather sedate him if I were going to do that. But my chag, 46 cm, just measured him up while I had him in ball as well, so he's done some growing. Um, I might do one more scrape on the kahaku. I'll let you have a look at them and see if we identify anything on them. But that's two fish, three scrapes per fish, nothing on the Yamabuki, couple of flukes on the, on the Chag. I expected to see flukes because I'm treating for flukes. I already knew they were in there. Oh my god damn this parasite lark is a pain in the ass. I know this is not the kind of thing that everybody wants to see, but hopefully if me showing you helps everybody else a little bit, or somebody else, then that's a good thing. But I don't like seeing them not happy. I want to see them right. We've reduced the numbers in there. There's um, Seven fish come out of this pond, they've gone to Mike's, and there are six fish out of the mini pond, they've gone to Mike's, with a free gift by the sounds. We knew we were going to have flukes, he were happy to take them, so he were happy to take them, he knows he can treat, he's got some Lernex Pro, so he's going to treat, but I know there's nothing else on them. At the time when I scraped them, there was nothing else, not showing anything else. I just don't understand why the Shamabuki is acting where he is. Unless it's gill flukes, and they've already done more damage to his gills and he's struggling. I don't know. But fingers crossed. I'll give him a salt bath now, and see what he does. So, I'll get back to you in a tick. Right guys, the next thing I'm gonna do now, this is why this is why we, me, Vince, everybody else, all the guys on the live stream, are all pushing to have a community. A community as to people that you can turn to for some advice on what's best to do when you've got a problem. Several people with several ideas is far better than one individual with one, maybe sometimes no idea other times the wrong idea but if you can ask friends and advice and people that have been doing this longer than yourselves on what's a good thing to do or what you should do with something as this you know always good to have a, a, a community of people that you can turn to which hopefully you know all of us out there have or somebody that you can ask for advice or somebody you can turn to if not feel free to give us a shout anything that i've been taught, taught or or advice that i've been given if i can pass that on to someone to help them the better because 
I'm struggling with this fish. I don't know really what's wrong with him. I'm finding nothing on him when I scrape him, but he ain't happy. But one bit of advice I've just been given, rather than a PP bath, give him a salt bath. 10 litres of water to one gram of salt for 10 minutes, I think it said. I will double check and get right back to you and let you know for definite. Right, one gram of salt to 10 litres for a 20 minute bath. So, what we've got here right now. Right guys, there we go, salt's in, dissolved, air stone, a little bit there still needs to be dissolved, 20 minutes for the Yamabuki and he's going in there, hopefully, fingers crossed, that'll uh, ease his suffering a little bit for whatever it is that he's going through, and we'll get the fish netted up and get him in. There we go guys. He's in. His fins are in a right mess. 20 minutes now. Let it sit there for 20 minutes. Let's see how he goes on. His pecs are torn. His rear fins are torn, his tails are torn. I think the only thing that's not got any damage to him or any splits in him is his dorsal. So, 20 minutes for you in there, fella, and hopefully that starts making you feel a little bit better. But that's the most I've seen him with his pets out in the last two days. So, I'm going to keep my eye on him for 20 minutes, guys, and we'll see how it goes on. Obviously, you don't want to sit here watching this bowl for 20 minutes with me. But look at his pecs. Poor thing. Proper split, this one. Two, three places on that one now. Two places on the rear fins. So, hopefully, hopefully this will ease it a little bit for him. But he's got an air stone. What I am going to do is grab a quick lid just in case he does have a bit of a thrash and then he can't jump out and I'll get back to you in a bit and we'll get him back in pond. Right guys, I'll say this much, it didn't like that at all. Um, 20 minutes and he was 10 minutes in and trying to get out. So, <laughs> they almost jumped clean out of the tub. Glad he had a lid on, which prevented it. But yeah, they weren't happy about that. They didn't like that at all. But it's done. Let's see if it makes any difference. He's, uh, He's looking a bit shit and a bit sorry for himself. I think there's something else going on. Because... Yeah, something not right. Let me find somewhere to put this coffee. And I'll spin this camera around. Is there now, over there at the side, at the back, keeping well away from me, that is for sure. Yeah, not an happy bunny. No, not that there's a bunny at all, there's a coin, but he ain't happy at all. Hopefully, that might have eased it a little bit, but this is, look, what's this? He ain't happy at all. Clamped up. Still clamped up. But 
but we'll see how he goes throughout the day. Hopefully, after his little salt bath, if it was gill fluked, that should have sorted him out. Well, he's swimming around like, but he ain't his usual self. But there's a few of them that are a bit. Uh, a bit irritated, not the happiest. Parasites, man. Pain in the absolute ass. Oh, right, next thing. Netting back on. Quick tidy up. Put stuff back to normal. Give them a feed. Get my tea There we go guys, the pond's back to normal, net back on, some mealworms on for fish. Water's nice and clear. And everybody seems chilled and relaxed. And the book is a bit more active. Trying to get his pecs opened up again. Oh, well, we'll get to see if he comes up and has a bit of something to eat. There we go. That's better. That's a better sign. Nice one, Skegger. Salt bath seems to have done him some good. Hopefully his fins come good again. And he gets back to normal. And the fluke treatment that we've got him does what it needs to do. There's a few less fish in there now. So they're all looking good, apart from the Yamabuki. He's not 100%, but he's certainly better than what he was first thing this morning. So thanks very much, Keggy, appreciate that. Always good to get a bit of advice from others. If you're struggling and don't know what you're doing, not so much not what you're doing, but you're struggling with resolving a problem or an issue. A bit of advice from other people can always go a long way. And he is certainly now. I haven't seen him flash once since I gave him the salt bath. Still clamped up a little bit, but he has been up in the muck where he was, he was completely clamped on both sides, so we've certainly eased it a little bit for him. Now, then, guys, don't forget for the uh, next Thursday night live, <coughs> we're going to be doing the Matsu Kawabaki and the Deutz counterpart which is the Kumonru the Kumonru there and the Matsu Kawabaki just down there so we're going to ask you for your photographs of your Matsu Kawabakis and your Kumonru So if you'd like to join us next Thursday night and showcase your fish and share them with the group and we'll all have a nice look at them and appreciate them and uh, do what we normally do, pick a little bit of a winner. It's no prize or anything, it's just a little bit of fun. Something that everybody seems to be enjoying so we're going to keep on doing it. And I've forgotten what's for the fortnight after. I'll get back to you and I'll put a little uh, a little message just about here somewhere after this when I do the editing. So there we go guys. Show is looking nice. Proper up of them. Pond's nice and clear, nice and clean. There's my uh, Easter shower and my case 
the shower. My day Nietzsche Benny Gully. How can me being able to say out some Japanese names for a change? There we go, look at that. Absolutely spotless, nice and clean. Just see there. Let's see if we can let's see if we can zoom in on them for you. You can see that there, but that's my Kumon Roo. And just coming out from underneath there is my Benny Ginga. Lilies are starting to come back when they've finally finished demolishing them and smashing them to bits. Yeah, there's there's my Kumon Roo. Let's see if we can get a clear shot there. And that's a kill back it, scaled version, just underneath it. And there for everybody, as you can see there, there's my little Asagi. Oh, that's good. She's come up and fed outside of us, but look how damaged his fins are. God, he's made a mess of them. My Sankey. And Benny Ginga. My Platinum all gone just there. And as I said, guys, Every pond needs one. There's my butterfly koi just there, which is a Kajaku Ginnerin. And I'm going to say it's a key Kajaku because it's more yellow than than the orange. I quite like it actually. It's going quite nice. My uh, Kahaku. My Benny Kikikuru, my Doyce Chad, my Crappy Arawaki, uh, the standard Chad. I should just measure that today. 46 cm now. Looking lovely. Really nice fish. There's the shiller. Now then. There's the fish that we were talking about the other week with Vince. I don't know if what it is again. But Vince got one from Adam Byers the other week. And mine's just down there. But there's my Asagi. And my uh, <laughs> multi step Kahaku Gin Ring. Uh, not at all a Kahaku, but I like it. My uh, Deutz Karashi Goy. My Beko. And we have my Mark Gardner fish, which is somewhere in amongst all that lot there. Just, oops, sorry, somewhere in amongst all that lot down there. Hopefully, the Yamatanoshki is literally just there, you can see. Just there. No, no, that's uh, the Mark Gardner's Kikikuru. I'm not sure actually. And I think, let's see if we can come back a little bit. So there we go, there's the Matsukawa back here. So yeah, next Thursday night guys, Matsukawa back is and the Deutsch counterpart, which is a Kumon rule. That's what we're going to be showcasing next week, guys. So, and then I have my Aragoki <laughs> squashed tomato. Looks <laughs> more like a shibubkin. And just down there, I have one of Dazza's. Oh, it's just gone. Just underneath here, underneath the lilies, is Mac Makashi Ogon from Daz. 
But yeah, those ones are a little bit shyer still, they don't come out too much yet. But I really like this one. Forgot what it is, Vince. But it's one that you got from Adam Byers. Pretty little fish. And then uh, there we have a goshki from our dance. But I think it could be an Asagi, Asagi goshki. Or an Asagi cross goshki. No. Everything's looking certainly better than it did this morning. He's out now, his pecs are out. So he's certainly feeling a lot better than what he was. He's holding the left one slightly a little bit, but better than what he was. Just hope his spins all heal up nice again. And we can get rid of these goddamn flukes. But yeah, certainly a lot more active, and I've not seen him flash once. So nice one, mate. Appreciate it. Thanks for the advice. Worked a treat. He weren't too happy in there, like, but it did work. I really do like the mealworms. I stand out. I quite like my little my little sanky. Coming on nice. Killer cockapoo. That's it. Oh boy. Chances of getting it back off him now are slim to none. One word from me. Aha! Does whatever he wants. Looking good. Got long cut, grass tidied up, garden done. Washing out. That's it for weekend. Time to kick back, relax, and enjoy the rest of my holiday. What I was going to do was get this fence done, but <laughs> can't be asked. I'll get it done at a later date. Gonna put some more bird feed in here and a little bit more in these and bang them some mealworms in which we've got plenty of three tubs of mealworms on go so we're plenty of then we've got the mix of the mealworms freshwater shrimps and the normal food and obviously the food but we are now on the last two tubs in here I also have a tub in the house as well but these up for birds and hopefully my little robin that keeps coming back I'll get himself a nice little uh, selection of mealworms but I'll tell you what else keeps coming on here and all the magpie we've got a little magpie that comes around we've had it been coming around all all the way around the garden um, back end of last week just down here on the on the side bit there it was pulling out all the grass and moss for his nesting material and um, he's got, he must have had some damage for a winter to his, to his, uh, one of his, paw, no, his paws, no he said paw then because I saw a dog running at me, uh, to his, to his foot and he's, he's only got like a stump, he doesn't have a full foot, so he's like a one-legged or one-footed magpie, but he were uh, hanging on the side of uh, here, helping himself to some mealworms, I'll try to see if I can get the bit of footage that I recorded and I'll uh, stick it in on this video. Okay, just had a brush. It's like a ball of fluff. Fluffy bushed up tail on him. He holds it up curled on his back. It's lovely to have a dog again in the garden so you can have somebody to keep you company when you're doing all this kind of thing, isn't it lad? Good boy. Right, we will get back to you in a bit guys. Off he goes. 
So there we go guys. Hopefully, fingers crossed, in the very near future we should have got on top of these parasites. Pond's looking good. Water quality and conditions could have been better. Parasites are a thing. Enjoy keeping koi. That's what comes with it. Sometimes you have good weeks, sometimes you don't. But hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah, I can hear birds on top of the roof here now. Coming to, feed, coming to feed a bit more. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get on top of it and we'll get everything sorted. I'll keep you up to date. Usual thing, guys, if you can do us a huge favour. Like, share, subscribe, tell a friend. Till next time, keep smiling and we'll catch you on the next one. Catch you later, guys. See you in a bit.